Welcome to Math We Know. Are you able to solve this equation? 5 to the power of x minus 3 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of x. Hmm, x is the exponent. Firstly, inspection. 5, 3, 2. Hmm, nothing interesting, nothing valuable. So now, oh, maybe you're gonna say x equals 1 is a root. Then your statement will be wrong and you will only get zero points. Why? Let's have a look at it together. What we really do is to divide the both sides by 5 to the power of x. That's what we usually do. And now we're also going to do this. Divide the both sides by 5 to the power of x. Then you can see that this equation will change a lot. Okay. The left side divided by 5 to the power of x. And the right hand side, 2 to the power of x, also divided by 5 to the power of x. Then, 5 to the power of x divided by 5 to the power of x is 1. So it is 1 minus 3 to the power of x over 5 to the power of x. It is 3 over 5 all to the power of x. And the right hand side as well. It is 2 over 5 all to the power of x. Return to our equation. Go back to our original equation. 5 to the power of x minus 3 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of x. Although x is exponent, we can easily find a solution of this equation. If x equals 1, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, and this equation holds. That means x equals 1 is naturally, obviously, and certainly a solution of this equation. But our problem is, we only know that x equals 1 is a root of our equation, but we don't know how many roots our equation has. So our problem is, How many roots does our equation have? Are there any other roots? If there are, we have to solve for other roots. If there aren't, we have to prove that x equals 1 is the only root of our equation. Go back to our current step. Now, x is also the exponent, but only two of them. That means x appears here, here, here not. But you can also say that 1 to the power of x equals 1, but that doesn't make sense. So now what I like to do is to add 3 over 5 all to the power of x on the both sides. So it's going to be 2 over 5 all to the power of x plus 3 over 5, all to the power of x. That's the right hand side. The left hand side is still 1. The left hand side is a constant, and the right hand side is a function of x. Look, if we call the left hand side as f of x, then Let's research this function. 2 over 5. It is, of course, a positive number. However, it is smaller than 1. 3 over 5 as well. It is positive, however, smaller than 1. We know that the function f of x is a sum of two exponential functions. Because 2 over 5 all to the power of x 
is an exponential form, an exponential function, and 3 over 5 to the power of x as well. And we all know that if a to the power of x is an exponential function of x, where a is a constant, two cases. When a is bigger than 1, and when a is between 0 and 1. If a is 1, then this function is constant. It is y equals 1, of course, because 1 to the power of any number is 1. So now let's focus on these two cases. If a is greater than 1, this function looks like this. If a is between 0 and 1, this function looks like this. We can say, in this case, the function is monotonically increasing. And in the second case, our function is monotonically decreasing. So now, we know that 2 over 5 and 3 over 5 are both between 0 and 1. So these two functions, 2 over 5 all to the power of x and 3 over 5 all to the power of x, are monotonically decreasing. And these two functions are connected by a plus sign. A sum of two decreasing functions is always decreasing. Of course, a sum of two increasing functions are also increasing. But in this case, they're both decreasing. So the sum of two decreasing functions is decreasing. So that means f of x is decreasing. It is the right hand side, this. Our left hand side is 1, it is a constant. Actually, now we can transform our question. We have to solve for the value of x. Actually, our question is, are there any other roots? If there are, solve for them. If there aren't, prove that x equals 1 is the only root of our equation. Or prove that this equation has only one root. Now, we only have to examine if this function has only one root. How shall we do that? The number of the roots can be transformed into the number of the intersections of two functions. How many intersections have the left hand side and the right hand side? The left hand side is constant. It is y equals 1. And the right hand side is a decreasing function, monotonically decreasing. So now the question is, how many intersections do a monotonically decreasing function and a constant function have? Of course, if they have maximum one intersection. So what does it mean? That means they may have or they may not have. If they have, there will be only one intersection. If they don't have, that's also okay. So maximum one intersection. A decreasing function and a constant function have maximum one intersection. Go back to our original equation. x equals 1 is a root of our equation. So that means x equals 1 is intersection. So it should be the only intersection. x equals 1 should be the only root because they have maximum one intersection, so that means this equation has maximum one root. But x equals 1 is one of the roots, is a root, so it is the only root. Do you get it? Only 4% of people will subscribe to me. Are you one of the 4%? Give a thumbs up for this splendid question. We'll see you next time.